Cooking fireplaces, pellet stoves, and outdoor fires is illegal in the Bay Area. The Bay Area Air Quality Management District is issuing a Spare the Air Alert Day. This is due to smoke from wood burning combined with winds and low temperatures expected to cause unhealthy air quality. The Glide Foundation served open dining in front of their San Francisco church today. Volunteers arrived as early as 5 a.m. prepping Thanksgiving meals. People lined up to get a warm meal before joining other members of their community in their outdoor dining room. And the first of San Francisco's new public toilets was installed in the Embarcadero Plaza. Others like it will soon replace the old green models across the city. The touchless toilets offer up to eight minutes of privacy and automatically sanitize themselves between uses. I'm Ryan Yamamoto with The Minute. You're watching CBS News Bay Area. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm Amanda Starantino, and let's get a check on the forecast with First Alert meteorologist Jessica Birch. Well, happy Thanksgiving. It's the warmest day of the week here in the Bay Area. We're sitting in the upper 60s in San Francisco, upper 60s even along our coastline, and we have plenty of sunshine to share today as we extend into the afternoon hours. Even off in our inland hills, we're expecting low 70s, a beautiful sight to see with some mid-70s near Santa Rosa. If you have loved ones still coming in from out of town today, maybe their flight was delayed, taking a look at today's travel forecast. For the most part, all throughout the states, things are clear with the exclusion of tax. There's been some scattered showers and some strong storms pushing through that area. Now, back here in the Bay, daytime highs today are expected to mostly sit in the 70s throughout our inland areas. Like I mentioned, we are going to warm up significantly as we head into the afternoon for our Bay Area and even along the coast. It's going to be a warm, sunny day for us. And right around the corner, we actually have partly cloudy skies and a cooling trend. So let's talk about that a little bit further as we head into this weekend after Thanksgiving. Well, it's officially Christmas, right? Heading into this weekend, we're expecting upper 60s for everyone across the board heading down to San Jose. Maybe you want to head out to Christmas in the park. Expect beautiful conditions no matter where you're at. Now, of course, Levi Stadium is going to be packed to the brim just in time for the Saints versus 49ers game. We're expecting 60s as kickoff happens at 120 or around 120. And so it's going to be a beautiful afternoon to get out there and enjoy some festivities and, of course, watch some much needed football. Now, taking a look at rain chances, they are going to remain very low as of now. Now, off in the distance, just around Wednesday, we're seeing an increase of showers, but that's a long range model. So we're keeping a close eye on that. For now, we're just putting partly cloudy skies. Daytime highs, though, really are going to cool down. Like I said, today is one of the warmest days of this week. Notice how we jump about 10 degrees just as we head into Sunday. It's a completely different trend, and that's also the case for our friends off into our microclimates, where today we're sitting in the low 70s. We're going to see upper 60s by the weekend, low 60s and upper 50s as we kick off next work week. For many families, this will be their first big holiday gathering since the start of the pandemic. And in the busy hustle and bustle, health, health experts are reminding you to keep COVID and other respiratory viruses in the back of your mind. KPX5 Sean Chitness asked one local expert for his advice before you meet up with your loved ones. Archita Mundo is hosting Thanksgiving at her house this year. Spending the holiday with family the past two years wasn't possible because some relatives were considered high risk for COVID-19. But this year, local doctors are encouraging gatherings with loved ones for the first time since the pandemic, emphasizing the chance to reconnect with family and friends. My in-laws are coming um, and there's a bunch of kids so really looking forward to it. This house is going to be bustling with a lot of energy uh, and good times. As she prepares to cook for a large group again and she sets the table for her guests, Archita is getting back into the routine of hosting after a long break. We were all very careful and uh, just didn't want to take any chances. And so this is uh, finally feeling like back to normalcy. But Dr. Peter Chin Hong from UCSF says necessary steps like getting a COVID booster, having masks nearby, and getting tested are still part of a smart plan. We're approaching normal, but we're not quite normal yet. He says we're actually transitioning into a new normal, where we always consider the potential spread of serious infections while still enjoying the festive season. I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily to think about protecting ourselves and our community in a much more deliberate and thoughtful way. So he recommends testing right before you travel to any family gatherings. If you show symptoms, get tested immediately 
or three days after learning you may have been exposed by someone else. I've taken whatever guidelines were there. I was trying to follow it uh, to my best ability, but was never paranoid. Archita knows there are still plenty of viruses out there to be worried about. But since she hasn't gotten COVID even once, she thinks a measured approach remains the best way to live her life. It was nice because I was just looking forward to doing this for a long time and finally it's here. Returning to a traditional Thanksgiving gathering this week and grateful for the progress made over the past two years that lets them celebrate together. Just be safe, be kind, be thankful. Reporting in Santa Clara, Sean Chitness, KPIX 5. Many organizations are working hard to make sure the hungry get fed this holiday season. Here at KPIX 5, we are in the middle of our Food for Bay Area Families Drive. Our Reed Cowan went to the Contra Costa County Food Bank where some special little helpers pitched in. Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano here, and we've got a troop of Girl Scouts who are volunteering. They're filling these bags of apples. Troop number 30948. Everybody turn around and wave at the camera. Yes, they're happy to be serving, and Jen is one of their leaders here. It's got to be gratifying to see these kiddos step up to serve their community. It is. It is. Our Girl Scout motto is be prepared. So teaching the girls to be ready, be prepared, the willingness to serve whenever, wherever, and teaching him young. What's amazing to me is something that's also sobering and that's that 25 percent of the people who benefit from this food bank are kids just like these kids here are serving. What kind of conversations are you having with these young people as you drive here to this service to sort of let them know what they're doing, the weight of it, the impact? To feed the hungry. Again, to be willingness to help out at a time of need, especially during the holidays. Always. Every, every time of year, but especially now. What's the payoff when you serve others? I know in my own life what the payoff has been. What about you and your kids? To pass, to pass it down, to teach, to give, to give. All right, we love it, succinctly put and beautifully put. So if you want to be a part of this and follow the leadership, the example of these kiddos here, you can go to our website, kpix.com forward slash give or you can use the QR code there at the bottom of your screen. Follow that link and you're gonna find the feeling, what it feels like to be connected to a community and we like to call that family. Back to you. Well, the holiday season is not easy for everyone and these students at San Jose State visited an on-campus food pantry to get some help. KPX 5's Max Darrow shows us the demand is higher than ever. As all of us think about things we're grateful for this week, there's something here on the San Jose State University campus that students are grateful for every single day, and that's called the Spartan Food Pantry. I got some zucchini, sweet potato. Fresh produce some and other staples made up the majority of Himanshi Barana's grocery foods. basket on her regular trip to the Spartan Food Pantry on Wednesday. I think I'm done. She's a master's student at San Jose State. Thank you. And she's just one of the more than 2,500 students who relies upon the university's food pantry. It's where she can get some of her groceries for free. Surviving here is quite difficult, actually, as an international student. So this actually really, really helps us. It makes a huge impact in our lives. A lot of students face food insecurity. And That's Ben Falter, the senior student affairs case manager at SJSU Cares, which helps provide resources and services for students facing financial hardships. And the reality is we have a lot of low-income students that come through here. A, a job loss, a reduction in hours, a parent's job loss can really all of a sudden put them from that point where they're doing okay with budget, but there's not much in the bank to immediately being in a space where they need additional assistance. He says the pantry has existed for around three and a half years and the demand is growing. This year, we're averaging over 200 students every single day in our pantry. And by comparison, last year, that was around 120 students. And the year prior, around 55 students per day. However, the stigma often associated with seeking out resources is diminishing. When you see that you're one of 200 students coming into a pantry in a day, you don't feel alone. You feel that you're just accessing something that's there for you. Students who qualify for the program can come get groceries once a week. Inside, they'll find primarily staples like milk, eggs, produce, beans, and rice. But yes, some bonus items, too. Emanuela Anjoui works at the Spartan Food Pantry. She also shops there for her staples. So that really helps, like, really decrease my expenses when it comes to groceries. 
She sees how the pantry's existence benefits her peers on a day-to-day -day basis, <laughs> but she also feels it herself. This really helps, like, not only me, but all other students that really need food. With Thanksgiving upon us, Barana wasn't shy to express her thanks for the pantry, but her gratitude extends well beyond the holiday. We are grateful all around the year for this. San Jose State is kicking off a campaign called Share Your Spartan Heart. It's in an effort of raising money and also spreading awareness for ways that people can help out these students in need. As tuition dollars do not go into the food pantry, nor do they fund the emergency crisis funds that they distribute. In San Jose, Max Darrow, KPIX 5. Still ahead on CBS News, Bay Area, California is still trailing behind nearly half the states when it comes to women holding public office. We'll hear from one former Bay Area lawmaker about the obstacles she had to overcome for her aspirations to become reality. Inflation hitting the holiday hard. We'll take you to Pacifica to see how a family business that has been a staple in the community for almost 50 years is coping with rising costs. And later, the 49ers win Monday may have been their best performance of the season. Our Charlie Walter tells us how every player on the offense contributed in the red and gold report.